In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to manually separate simulated or spot process and how to screen print it step by step. My screens are a 230 mesh. I'm using Ulano TZ Emulsion. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can grab this. And I am going to use the sharp side of my scoop coater and I'm going to coat my screens one and one. I'm going to do the garment side first and the ink side next. Now I'm going to sit it in the drying rack like this, that way the emulsion is pulled down by gravity. Now I'm going to re repeat that for the rest of the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that I'm finished with my emulsion, I'm going to put the remaining emulsion back in the bucket. Now I'm going to take this over to the washout booth and just give it a good rinse. While our screens are drying, here is the artwork that we are going to print. Dave did a really awesome job designing this. First thing I'm going to do is go over to image and then mode. And then I'm going to make sure it is in RGB. So that's very important because we're going to be using these channels here in RGB to separate our artwork. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image and then mode or excuse me, adjustments, and then I'm gonna to go to levels. You can bring this up by hitting Command L. I advise you guys learning your quick keys. And we're going to take this little black selector here and I'm going to select the top left corner just to make sure this is a true black. This is going on a black t-shirt. And then I'm going to take this little white selector and select inside of the little ghost dog here. I forget his name but that will make sure that we have a true black and a true white so i'm going to hit ok and then the next thing i am going to do is i'm going to i'm going to check my image size i want to make sure that this thing is indeed of high resolution and i hit command option i you can bring this up by going to image and then image size and this is 12 by 16 this is going to be a front print so that is absolutely great and we're working with 200 dpi that is awesome as well. Anything under 150, I would say, is a little low res. 300 DPI would be ideal, but 200 is right in that sweet spot. So we're going to hit OK. Now we're going to go ahead and create our white base. And if you're not already on the channels layer or palette, just go ahead and click on it. And we're going to be working with this quite a bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my red, just kind of look at it. So what we're looking for to, to create our white base is because this is a bright orange car, the, the dog's bright white, his face and all that. We just kind of want to look at each one of these and see which of these channels is going to work well for our white base. I think this one is a little much because the, the moon would probably come out a little too bright. Green might be a, a good option. Looks like we got enough information behind the car and the moon here. And also I'm looking at some of these gray areas that might work. Let's check out the blue. Okay. So the blue is a little too much or, or not enough. We have the bright white here in the dog and the face, but there's not enough information behind the, the car here or the moon itself. So let's go ahead and go with green. We're going to hold command down and then click over the little thumbnail or you can just click over the layer, the channel itself, click on it and it's going to bring up a selection. So now what we're going to do is make a new alpha channel and we're going to do that based off this selection by clicking this little button down here and it's going to give us a new alpha channel. Now if we click on this, I'm going to hit command D to deselect and now I'm going to click on this alpha one channel here and I am going to hit Command I. So now that will give us our, our screen basically because what is black here is going to be what's going to, to print that white. So I'm gonna double click here and let's just call this number one. 
white base. You can call it whatever you want, but we will be printing these in sequence as we make these layers. So I'm going to just call this number one white base. Now I'm going to click on the RGB layer up here and I am going to go to select and color range. And I'm going to go to the select option here and I'm going to click on reds. Now our press only has six colors. So we want to pick the six colors that are going to work best to recreate this image. Red is definitely one of them because of these pumpkins and, and the car and the moon and everything. So we're going to go ahead and select our, our red here. We're going to hit OK. And even though it says no pixels are more than 50% selected, it's OK. We're just going to hit OK anyways and then go to Select, Modify, and Expand. And we're going to expand that by one. And it's going to give us that same little error but don't worry about that. We're going to come down here and we're going to make a new channel again with this little button here. We're going to click on that. Now a very important step, hit Command D or Control D that will basically deselect our selection here. And I'm going to click on this new channel and I'm going to hit Command I. So now you can see the red here that is required to basically build up this image. Now I'm going to come down here and because we're going to go down through each one of these colors, I'm going to call this number two red. And I'm just going to hit enter. I'm going to go back to RGB again. And we're just going to go down the row. We're going to, the row, <laughs> excuse me. So select color range, and then we're going to go to yellows. And I am going to hit OK. Now I'm going to go back up to select, modify, and expand by one. We're gonna do that again. You'll see that we'll just kind of keep repeating this process. And we're gonna go down here and make a new channel again. Hit Command D, very important. Don't forget to hit Command D. Select this channel here, hit Command I, so that way it will inverse it. Now we have our yellow for uh, everything that's going on here, our pumpkins, the, the glow around the moon, the moon itself. And we're going to title this number three, yellow. And sometimes it will want to change its name because yellow is a common color that's used in CMYK. But I'll show you that more here in a moment. I'm going to go back up to RGB. I'm going to go to Select, Color Range. And I know that there's no green or anything that looks like there's green in there. Even if I select green, we don't see anything in our image. So we're just going to skip that one. Cyan, same thing. We're just going to skip that. But if, if your images do have that, you will need to make a alpha channel for your, your green, your cyan, your blues. We're going to click on magentas here. There's really nothing showing up. We're going to next create our highlight white. So we're just going to, to go ahead and we're just going to hit cancel here. And generally I'll create a highlight white from the blue channel itself. So I'm going to hold down command and then click on this channel here and that will bring up a selection. Now with the, the white highlight, I don't want to expand this any because I say for instance with this dog here, if I zoom in, now if I already expand that by one, highlight white will end up being bigger than the, the actual under base. So we're not going to expand this one, but we are just going to make a new channel, hit Command D, I'm gonna come over to this channel, hit Command I, I'm going to inverse that, and then we're going to call this, we'll call it number number six. So let's call that number six, highlight white, because we're going to make a, a couple more channels and I'll show you where I'm going with this. The next thing is because it is orange, I mean, technically you could use the red and the yellow, overprint those wet on wet, but I specifically want an orange spot color here. So I'm going to click on RGB up here, make sure I got my RGB channels pulled up. I'm going to go to select and then color range. And I'm going to go up here to sample colors. And I'm going to select where this, this car is at here. Generally your settings will be on, on none when you are doing this, but 
I'm going to bring it down to black matte so that way I can kind of see what it is I'm selecting. As you see here, you slide this fuzziness slider up. It's going to grab more or less, but I do want it to grab. And one of the things I'm paying attention to, uh, let's just slide it all the way up, is how much of this pumpkin it is grabbing up. Even though the, the pumpkin is orange, the red and yellow will take care of quite a quite a bit of that. But I don't want the orange to be in this helmet where it's yellow. And I don't want too much of the orange to be in this moon right here. So I'm just going to slide that back until you see this little area here where it's, it's no longer selecting some of that yellow. And I'm going to just kind of set it right about there when it just disappears right there in the helmet. That gives us enough of the, the orange here and the, the pumpkin, the, the car, the text, and not only that, but the moon as well. So I'm going to, to go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to go to Select, Modify, Expand by 1. We're going to hit OK. But I'm going to go ahead and click a new channel button here uh, based off of our selection, of course. I'm going to hit Command D. I'm going to go down here, select my channel, hit Command I. Don't forget to hit Deselect. I did deselect it before I hit Command I. Very important. Now let's call this, I think this is probably a layer that I'm going to print right before the, the highlight whites. We'll call this number five and we'll call it orange. All right, so we're getting pretty close. One of the things I do want to do is I want to create a channel for this gray because there is quite a bit of gray going on here. And anytime you're doing spot process for, even if it just looks like it's black and white, but it has a lot of gradients in it, I do suggest making a gray. It will make it look that much better. So let's go ahead and make sure RGB is selected. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a trick when it comes to selecting these colors. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm just going to click down here and you could hit command shift and N that will give you a new layer and then you hit OK. The color that I like to use for my gray. So what I did here is I clicked on the little swatch and now I'm going to go over to color libraries right here and I'm going to hit C8, C as in Charlie and then eight on the keyboard. And then I'm going to hit this little down arrow and I want to select this cool gray 8C because it's a pretty common gray in spot process. So I'm going to hit OK. And now we have that color right here. And I'm going to take my marquee tool right here, our square marquee, and I'm just going to drag a selection and I'm going to hold down option on the keyboard and hit delete. And that will fill it with our foreground color. Now I'm going to hit Command D to deselect that. Now if we go over to our channels with RGB selected, I'm going to come up here to select color range. And now I'm going to select in where this box is. I know you couldn't see it there for a second, but if you turn it to none and we select in this box here, and now we go back to our black mat, we'll see exactly all the gray that it is selecting. You can see that some of the dog is selected here. Some of the areas in the skull where it's white, which is fine. Sometimes it's it's better to grab more information than it is to not grab enough when doing your separations. But I might pull that back a little bit. One of the things I am kind of focused on is what's going on right here with these tombstones and then this tree. It looks like we're grabbing plenty enough, but I think I'm going to back it out so that way this looks 100% black there. Same thing for the dog. So I'm just going to pull it back just a little bit until the dog no longer has any selection. And what's going on here is this is just the fuzziness of the edge. Uh, it, it will end up printing some gray there. And then the other thing we need to pay attention to are some of these gray areas. But that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now we have our selection. With the gray, I'm not going to expand it any. I'm just going to make a selection based off of that because I don't want it running into the white too much. I just kind of want those to butt up next to one another. So I'm going to make a, a new selection. Hit Command D. Don't forget to hit Command D. And then I'm going to hit Command I to inverse that. And so now we have our gray channel here. You will notice that we do have this little black box because of the selection that we made. But we can just 
go back to our marquee tool. I'm going to hit just D. I'm not going to hit command D. I'm just going to hit D and that will bring up our default colors here. I'm going to hit option delete and that will fill it with white. So now it will no longer print that little box there that we created to help us with our selection here. All right. So we're, we're moving right along the, that looks like the, the last color that we needed to create. So I'm going to go ahead and make this, let's just call it number four for now, because we already have one, two, three, five, and six. Let's call it number four gray. And I'm going to drag these around to orientate them in the order that they should print. So these are kind of stacking on top of one another. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create an alpha channel that is kind of based off, off of our t-shirt color. And our t-shirt color is gray, or excuse me, black. And I'm going to hit this new button here and it will make a new channel. I'm gonna slide this right above the white base and we'll just call this black t-shirt. All right, so here's a very important step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on black t-shirt. I'm going to come over here with my little color picker and I'm going to select black. I'm going to hit OK, make it a spot color. And I want to make sure the solidity is 100%. I'm going to hit OK. Now at this point, we're making our spot colors. We're assigning our spot colors. So our white base, we're going to double click on it. We're going to come over here to our color selector and we're going to make sure that this is white. We're going to change this to a spot color and we're going to make this 100% very important. So we want to make this 100%. Here is our white base color. And I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard for OK. We're going to go down the line now. We're going to do our red, double click on it, go to our color selector. You know, we already got our red, so I'm going to just hit OK. That red looks fine to me. I'm going to make it a spot color. This is very important as well for our colors. We are going to make this 5%. We're going to make this color 5% here, and I'll show you why here in a moment. Now we're going to go down to our yellow. Same thing. Color picker. I'm going to come over here to this side this time make magenta zero and then yellow 100%. So I'm going to hit OK. Choose a spot color. Again, solidity 5%. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to choose my gray and coming back to that, that spot color. So I'm going to go to color libraries. I'm going to hit C8 on the keyboard. Hit my little down arrow right here. Man, it's my down arrow. Anyways, so I'm going to select my cool gray 8C and I'm going to hit OK. Spot color once again. And let's go ahead and start out with 5% here and let's see what we get. We might need to boost that up. And you can see as I went and changed these to the yellow that it's changing the name. So let's go back. We're going to rename this. Well, let's just leave, let's leave it there for now because I might rearrange some of these orders. Uh, we got our cool gray 8C. And let's go ahead and do our orange spot color, color picker for here. I'm going to make magenta 50%, yellow 100%. I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard for OK. We're going to make this 5%. And so we got spot color selected. Looks like orange to me. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And then last but not least, we got our highlight white. I'm going to make it a spot color. And then we're going to assign it a white. And we're going to make this one 100%. We want our whites to be 100%. I'm going to hit OK. So now if we turn all these layers on, I can just click and drag over these eyes here. And you can see we've got the start to what is our separations. Now we just got to work from here and adjust some of these channels. The first thing I am going to do is I'm going to turn my highlight white off. And immediately you can see a huge difference here. It's looking quite a bit like it should. So turning my highlight white off and now I'm going to click on my white base. Now this is where things get a little tricky. I'm going to come up here to the top of my document. I'm just going to make it a separate window and I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to duplicate. And that will, the reason we're duplicating it is we want to A, if we need to, to go back to where our selection is all with all of our separations not have to completely go backwards we have that here but also i'm going to turn all these channels off 
So that way we can use this as a basis of comparison. So here's how our art should look. And here is what we are working with. So our, our copy is just for a basis of comparison and a fallback, a safety net, so to speak. So I'm going to go over to my channels and with my white base selected, let's go right back to where, where we left off. I'm going to hit command M, M as in Mary to, to bring up my white base curve here. And I'm just going to click in the middle and I'm just going to scooch this thing up until it starts looking more like this image here. And you notice that it, it pulled out a lot of those colors. You know, if we go the opposite way, it's going to increase it. So that, see, that's a little too much. So and I'm just kind of have it clicked in the middle here. I'm just going to drag it around until it looks similar to what we got going on here. And some of the things I'm paying attention to is the, the tree, the pumpkins, the the moon the car all that stuff so we want to make sure we're not taking away too much so i think and i'm just looking here just kind of comparing thing comparing things and to me that that looks pretty good um this pumpkin may be a little bit of an issue but that might just be an adjustment on some of the, the other colors that we need to address. So I'm going to slide this kind of back and forth and see where we're at with some of these colors here and just kind of slide it around, play with it until everything is looking pretty good. And I think we are pretty close. We didn't take too much away from everything. This this is just how it goes. You just kind of have to, to play around with these things until they, they look good. So it's going to take some time. That looks pretty good. I could go on and be a little pickier about it, but that looks pretty good to me. So now we're going to come over here to our red. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit Command M, and we're either going to add some more or take some more away. And as we add some, you can see it's just getting really red, but we kind of want a, a nice balance between uh, the the pumpkins here looking a nice bright orange, the, the moon with some of these colors going on here. So I'm just going to kind of slide this around until my pumpkins look, have a nice orange and I might be taking too much out, but we're just going to kind of slide this thing around and until it looks like our other image here. So I think I'm taking a little too much away there. I think that's adding a little too much. So I think, I think right about there isn't too bad. We didn't adjust it too much, but we adjusted it just enough. So that way these pumpkins look a little better. Now let's go over to our yellow. We'll do Command M and we'll do the same thing. We can either take away some of that yellow or add some. I do want to make sure that this helmet here is a nice bright yellow. So let's go ahead and we'll just pull it down. So that way we're adding some yellow and we may need to go back and adjust some of these other layers. Uh, like say for instance that that red until we just kind of have to fine tune things until it looks just right. All right, so our helmet is looking pretty, pretty bright. We've got a pretty bright yellow going on there. And some of the other things we got to look out for is this pumpkin's face, uh, the jack-o'-lantern, I should say. And then we want to keep our eye on this, this guy down here as well. So some of the times I just tend to, to go to an extreme on some of these and see where that gets me now we can also make a separate point and that will give us some more control over everything and we can kind of drag these around basically what you're looking at here here's some of our our darker tones some of our lighter tones uh, in other words down here we're going to have some more of our just full tones where we're going to have this bright yellow here and then some of these lighter tones like the the gray or the the glow around the the moon that's basically what you're adding or, or taking away and we can add as many points as we want until it gets closer to where we want it you don't want to make it your curve too 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 extreme but you never know just do whatever looks right to you so i think that we're getting pretty close here this looks pretty good to me so i'm I'm going to roll with that. I think maybe we might add a little bit more yellow to the helmet here. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I think that looks that looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. One of the things we can do just to make sure that this helmet is a nice bright white or yellow, excuse me. And what we can do is select our helmet here. Once we have our, our helmet selected, you can come over to your yellow and then with the, the black in front here, hit Option Delete. And you can see the difference. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo that. You can see how much brighter it is now. So I'm going to redo that. Hit Command D to deselect that. And so now our helmet is nice and it's a nice bright yellow. Now I'm going to go back to my red because I'm not quite happy with how much red is here in the actual moon itself. So I'm going to hit Command M and then I'm going to perhaps pull some of that red out until it looks a little bit more like the the other moon over there and we'll just add a couple points and see if that helps it looks like it's probably some of our highlight areas here we'll just kind of play around with that a little bit but one of the things you kind of have to be careful about is not to take too much out of these pumpkins here sometimes you can go and just make a selection of a particular item and fine-tune those <laughs> for the sake of this demonstration i'm not going to do that i'm going to show you how to get some pretty killer results without actually spending that much time because i don't want this tutorial to take up too much time but this will give you a basic idea of how to go about just really fine-tuning these manual separations and not needing a software just some time and a little bit of patience all right let's try our levels with this, I'm going to hit Command L and let's see. There we go. So now we're pulling some of that that red out of the moon. the The car is getting a little lighter, but I'll show you how to, to go about fixing that. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not pulling too much out of the the pumpkins, so that way that the pumpkins still do look. You know, we'll get a nice orange out of them. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. We didn't take too much out of the, the pumpkins, and we pulled some out of this this moon here. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now I'm going to go over to my gray and I am going to, I think the gray looks pretty good as is. We can kind of toggle that on and off just to see what we got. It looks like we could pull it back just a little bit. I think maybe there might be a little too much on some of these areas. Let's double click on this. And in this case, we're going to come over here to our solidity and we're just going to raise that up and let's see what that gets us. Cause some of these areas could be a little brighter and we're just going to adjust this one with the solidity and you can do this with your other colors as well. And I'm just trying to get it kind of close to the, what we got going on here with these tombstones. So if I take it all the way down, you can see how it's just really pulling all that gray out. But we're going to bump it up just a little bit. So I think that that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. And then let's toggle our orange on and off. I think we could probably boost this one up. So I'm going to double click on that. And then I'm just scrolling up on this. And I want to see what it looks like as I start to increase the amount of orange in there. So you can see, we've, I think we've gone a little too far with it. So I'm going to just kind of back up just a little bit. Now if we turn it all the way down, you can see we're just taking that orange out. So I just want to boost it up until we got a pretty similar looking orange with our, our car, our moon and all that. So I think that looks pretty good, pretty close. I'm going to go hit, I'm going to hit M for our curves once again. And I may pull some of this out of this moon here. I don't want it too harsh, uh, but I'm just gonna make a couple clicks here. So I'm, it's basically each of our quarters here. It's your darker colors. So from 100% to 75, 75 to 50, 50, 25 on to zero. So it's probably gonna be in this range here where you can pull some of it out and we'll pull some of it out by moving it up. I'm really not, liking what it's doing. I think it's compressing it just a little too much. So we'll just scoot it up just a touch. And I think that will work great. Okay. That looks good to me. So what you're seeing here is what you're going to, to get on press basically. Now let's turn our highlight white on. As you can see, it's just really killing this image. So if we go over to our highlight white 
and we hit Command M. I'm going to turn all these off just to show you what this highlight white is looking like. And you can see that we have quite a bit going on with your highlight white. You really just want your bright white areas such as here on the helmet, the, the areas of his face here this face here some of these highlights on this tombstone and possibly just a little bit inside of these gray areas so this is way too much but again having more information than necessary i mean you can always work backwards and you can't add once you've taken away so let's turn all these back on and now we're going to hit command m and we're going to start pulling out a lot of that that highlight white and we might just like really just clip this thing down real hard. So I'm just going to take a look at some of these areas here. Uh, some of our gray areas especially as well. And just kind of, uh, you can see how it's starting to add more to this part of the gray here and here. So that's really my main focus. Uh, we got this thing clipped pretty well. I just want to add just enough so that this is a bright white. This is bright white. And we're going to kind of fine tune these grays here. So to me, that that looks pretty good. I mean, that is pretty close. So I'm going to hit OK. I think we probably could just use a little more red in the pumpkins, in which we'll just come over here. And this is one of the areas where you can kind of drag things around. So maybe if I drag this gray up a little bit, it doesn't look like it made a whole lot of a change but we can perhaps put the red on top of the yellow i'm gonna hit undo because i didn't really see any much change there uh, but you can shift these things around guys and just kind of really see where it gets you but i think i might boost up the solidity of this red a little bit and see where it kind of gets us all right so look what is going on with this pumpkin right here i mean we are in the ballpark i mean i cranked this thing up quite a bit that looks great i think it looks great what do you guys think let me know down in the comments so i'm going to hit okay and we are finished with the separation so i'm just going to go ahead and save this so i'm going to hit command shift and s and here's some important steps so don't go away just yet and, and skip forward here's some pretty important steps i'm going to save this as a psd set way I have this. We're going to make some changes real quick so that way we can bring it into Illustrator and print out our film. Now I'm just going to save this PSD. I'm going to hit save and OK. I'm just going to go ahead and close this guy out because I'm very happy with how these separations are looking over here. So here's the, the important step, right? This black t-shirt layer, we need to delete that. So we're going to hit yes. And now, you know, this this is how it looks once you delete that the black shirt color and that's fine so i'm going to hit command save just to save over that and i'm also going to do another version where i'm going to delete the rgb layers or channels here so i'm just going to, to go ahead and delete those i am going to save this as a photoshop dcs2 and i'm going to hit save leave my default settings there and we're good to go. One of the things we didn't go back and change is the fact that yellow here, we want to make this number three, because if we try to bring this into Illustrator, which we're about to do, it will not allow you to do that. So that's very important. And then also here, we need to call this, we'll just call it gray, number four gray. And I'm just going to, to hit save. So that way we save over our EPS. Now, if I close this out, I'm going to hit command W to close it. I'm going to hit command O to bring our PSD open and we want to go back and make sure we do that that same thing to our um, I'm just going to delete this layer we want to make sure that the yellow is number three yellow otherwise we won't be able to bring it in we'll call this number four gray and we're just going to go ahead and save over that and we're going to close it and I'll show you why I made those two separate documents you may or may not like a certain representation so I'm going to hit command O and by the way, if you are in the market for Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, check out our link down in the description. What it will do is help support our channel and it doesn't cost any more than if you were to go over to Adobe Photoshop or, or Adobe.com and get Photoshop and Illustrator yourself. This kicks a little commission our way for helping you guys out, teaching a little something. So just keep that in mind. 
but I'm going to go ahead and open up my t-shirt registration template in which we do have this for sale as well. I'll leave a link down in the description and I'm going to open up my t-shirt registration template here. All right, now that I have my template open, I am going to hit Command, Shift, and P, and that is a quick command for placing our, our artwork down onto our board in Illustrator. You can go to File and Place. Same difference, we're gonna go and find our files here, and here they are. So here's the PSD that we created, and then our EPS. And I'm gonna show you why we create these, these two different options, and you can figure out for yourself which you like. I like to use the EPS, but so here's the PSD. Let's go ahead and place that down real quick. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring in all these spot colors that we have created. Now you can see them here. We have our white base, our red, our yellow, our gray, our orange, and our white. The thing about the PSD is you get an actual representation of what this thing looks like. So now with our template, which you can, you guys can grab up. I'll show you how to go about using this with our template. With ours in particular, I'm just going to lock, lock the art layer and I am going to take our registration marks and we are going to move those out from over the print. And then once we go to print some film, those registration marks will be on each color. So now I'm going to hit command P. The thing about the PSD though, that even though you got the representation, one of the things I don't like is sometimes you can forget that you will have to turn off the, the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black print icons here. You don't want to print those colors out because it, it will print CMYK out. So we just want our spot colors to print. So if I hit print, it would start printing my six spot colors. We'll be good to go. So let's just go ahead and we'll get rid of this. We're going to unlock our art layer here. We're gonna delete that art. We're gonna come over here and select the swatches. And the reason I'm doing this is just to get rid of them, just to show you guys how the EPS brings everything in. Okay, so we're starting out fresh. Command Shift P to place. Now we're gonna bring our EPS in here. And our EPS, we're bringing in those same spot colors. And we can just plunk that thing right down. We're just gonna align it to the center of our artboard. We got our registration marks all set up. Now if I hit Command P on the keyboard and go to Output, we don't have that cyan, magenta, and yellow in there that's going to print. Even if we had started a new document, those wouldn't be on because there is none of that in there. We just have our spot colors. We are using Accurate Black Pearl. It does look like they have an upgrade to Ruby. However, we're gonna hold off on that. They always have a new version coming out and I'm going to go over here to the top right corner, hit edit configuration, configure half tones, and you'll see that we are using 45 LPI at 22.5 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and hit print. This looks great. I hope you all learn something here and stick around. We are going to go ahead and burn some screens and we're going to go on press. <laughs> So one of the key components to simulated or spot process print is your half tones. I have shown how to do this manually, but I do recommend you guys getting some sort of rip software in order to get some really nice spot process prints. And I do like to put the name of whatever color screen it is up at the top. So that way I know exactly what print order it goes in and what color to use. And I'm not guessing. Okay, our film is ready to go. Our half tones are looking good. Let's go ahead and toss these onto some freshly coated screens and expose them. Let's do that. You want to make sure your glass is nice and clean. Otherwise, any little dust on here will show up in your print and you'll have to chase down some pinholes. When placing your film onto your screen, you want to be sure that the tacky side is down. That is the side where the ink is actually printed on. If you put it backwards, your image is going to be backwards. If you don't print your film on the, the correct side, which is the emulsion side down, so to speak, it will allow the light to be able to travel around these dots. You won't get good to tell that way. We are using automatic size screens, but this will apply to manual as well. 
you'll just use your 20 by 24 screens. And in our case, we're going to place our image down five inches. And that's five inches from this point here, which technically gives me six inches from the edge of the frame to the top of our image. And I'm just going to make sure it's five inches down. And also I'm gonna make sure it's nice and centered, which for us is 11 and a half inches. We're good to go. Now we just have to tape it down and expose our screen. How long you need to expose your screen, you will have to figure that out yourself because every exposure unit is different. The strength of your bulbs, it's all gonna, it's all gonna fit. It's just gonna depend. So you're gonna have to figure that one out yourself. I can't help you out with that one. I can tell you that I'm going to expose this for about two minutes and 45 seconds with a multi-bulb exposure unit and that will get the job done for us. Now that our screen is nice and exposed, let's go ahead and take this over to the washout booth. What we're going to do first is we're going to wet the front and then the back side. And we want to keep it evenly wet, just kind of working our way back and forth. So that way the image falls out consistently without you having to really hit one area for too long. Now my image is starting to fall out. This is a good point where you can take your water hose or if you feel comfortable, you can use a pressure washer. In this case, I'm gonna use a water hose and we're just gonna go ahead and rinse this out. What you wanna keep an eye out for are some of these little small dots here in some of your graphic area and be sure to thoroughly wash those out. Be sure not to forget your information up here at the top that has your, your screen color. Now that we have our image nice and washed out, what I'm going to do at this point, I'm gonna turn the screen around and then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a rinse on the inside to get rid of some of that underexposed emulsion. Generally that will happen on this side and that will help keep our image from getting clogged up. And you want to rinse lightly. You kind of don't really want to hit your image area where your fine half is. And I will give it just a little light rinse. A little light pressure. All right, now that our image is all nice and washed out, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stick it out in the sun. By sticking our screen out in the sun, it will help to post expose it and it will help it dry a little quicker. At least here in Houston, it's pretty hot. It's still pretty hot. We'll let this sit for a little bit. I don't want it to get too, too hot because if it does, it can cause some issues with the tension. So let's go ahead and rinse and repeat with these other five screens. Ah. Pro tip, while you're rinsing out one screen, the other screen can be exposing, and by that time, you'll be ready to place your screen out in the sun, and you'll repeat the process, taking care of your screens pretty quickly. And don't forget the wipe in between screens. Not that kind of wipe. All right, now that our screens are all nice and dry, we're gonna tape them up. Let's go ahead and do that. Now 
now that our screens are all nice and taped up, I do want to say that we will be doing this on the automatic. However, this will apply to a manual as well, which you are about to learn. But stick around so that way you can see the results of separating this artwork manually and printing it on the press. Now that our screens are on the press, here are the inks that we are using. We have Wilflex Epic Amazing Bright White, just a standard orange, I believe it is Union Ink, a golden yellow. Uh, it's actually kind of like an athletic gold, just a hint of magenta in there. Then we have a Max Opaque Flag Bread from Union Ink. And then we have our C8 Cool Gray that is from Wilflex as well and we'll be using the same white for the top color. So I have my table up and there are these little center marks here from our registration template and I'm just gonna line up my center marks to the center of my palette and then I'm gonna lock everything down. Before putting your inks into the press, you wanna be sure to mix them up really well and you don't want to mash the ink down into your image area, otherwise that can give you a false printout. So at this point, what I'm going to do is turn my flash on, load a t-shirt up, do a test print, and put some clear transfer tape over that test print to line the rest of my colors up. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. In this process, I'm going to warm my palette up if you're on a manual. Just swing your palette underneath your flash, let it heat up a little bit. We are using a spreadable water-based palette adhesive, so all we have to do is warm it up, scrub a little bit of the lint off, and then our t-shirt will adhere quite nicely. All right, now that our palette is nice and warmed up, I'm gonna take my blank t-shirt. You can use a rag, but we happen to have this one laying around. And I'm just going to lay my t-shirt flat, and we're going to print our white base down to register the rest of our colors off of. So I'm gonna hit it two, maybe three times. Just kind of let the ink really flow through the mesh. Now I'm going to go ahead and flash that ink. Our ink is nice and flashed off. Let me show you how the base looks. Here's how the initial base print is looking. It's looking pretty good. Everything is nice and tacked up. No ink is coming up on my finger. So now we're gonna cover this with some of this clear transfer tape here, and that will allow us to print our other colors on top, register everything up, and get everything spot on. Let's do this. Going to rotate this palette around to one of my stations over here, and in the process with a manual or an automatic, be sure not to be rotating your press with the palette that you're lining everything up to. Otherwise, it can wiggle just a little bit. You don't want it to be out of registration. So let's go ahead and move it over to one of our stations and we'll start registering up every single one of our screens. And what we're doing is basically lining our little crosshairs up, which are our registration marks, and that will help us get in registration. Now that we're all pre-registered up, let's go ahead and load our squeegees up and ink up each screen. Oh, and do a test print.
Okay, we are pre-registered. We have our squeegees in, we're inked up, our test print on, and we're gonna put it underneath each station. And we're gonna do a little bit of a test print to see how everything is lining up. And let's see how it came out. All right, looks like we are pretty close. I think we need to move the whole image this way, just a little bit. Now that I know how much to adjust it, I'm gonna take a rag and I am just going to wipe this image down. Sorry about the shaky camera guys, but I think you get the point. I'm just kind of wiping it off like a dry erase board. I'm gonna make my adjustments and then we'll hit it one more time. All right, looks like we are spot on with our registration and in looking at the image, everything looks good. So we're going to move on to the rest of the colors. Cue the time lapse. So what I'm going to do at this point is I am going to take this piece of film off and we are going to print all the colors wet on wet and you want those inks to build up on the back of the screen and may take a few prints which I will show you as I walk you through the entire process but I'm just going to go ahead and send this one around without printing the white base and let's see how it comes out. So here we are right out of the gate. Here is our first test print and it looks pretty good. Let me get a close up. So you can see it's looking pretty good. Pretty true to our separations. It's looking pretty awesome. All the gray tones are there. We even got our little highlights up at the top of the text. And this is just our first print. So let's go ahead and do a handful more test prints. Let that ink build up on the bottom of those screens and I'm sure it will become that much brighter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shirt, put it up on my palette. I warm my press up underneath the flash and we are going to send it around and let it do one more test print. I'm gonna turn the print on. So we're gonna hit the white twice and then let it flash and let the rest of the colors do wet on wet. And I'll bring you guys along for the ride. Okay, so we're gonna put it in auto mode, start production, and we're gonna let this thing rotate around. In production, I'm gonna get y'all in focus, but it's gonna print twice. Okay, I had to get y'all in focus for a second. So now our gray is going down. It'll take a moment because it is on a delay for the flash over there. And then we'll do this next color wet. The rest of them will just be wet on wet and we're just building that ink up on the bottom of these screens. Here we go with our yellow. Slightly golden, very, very slightly. orange and then our highlight white and there we go as you can see it's getting brighter and brighter with every single print we got our nice kind of yellowish haze going around the moon our orange is plenty bright enough. Our dog is nice and bright. We got some nice transitions here in the bottom of the skull. And then our little tombstones here and the highlights on our trees are looking pretty awesome. And then those jack-o'-lanterns are just really 
shining you can see the whole silhouette of it because we have a little bit of added gray down there it's looking pretty awesome all right while i'm under the press taping up those registration marks i am going to show you guys how the ink is building up however oh my god i'm on this little stool here hopefully i don't fall off and i just turned the flash off but however it's still really hot i'm not going to bore you with taping off every one of these registration marks but I just take a little piece of masking tape and i just cover up each one of these little registration marks and my center marks here as well so i got all the registration marks taped off and i'm going to start at the very last screen which is the highlight white and you can see how the ink is building up on the back of the screen you want that to happen you don't want to mess with it you don't want to wipe it because you can mess up your image i'm going to go to each of the screens here we are at the orange you can see the gray built up the reason you're not going to see some of that yellow and red is just because the orange tint you can see it here just a little bit here we are on the yellow screen you can see some of the red building up you can see the gray here we are at the red screen you can see the gray built up and there's really not going to be anything built up underneath the gray screen over there because we are flashing that white So let me know what you think down in the comments, what you think how the print turned out based off of manually separating the artwork. I think it looks pretty awesome. Let us know down in the comments. So now at this point, we are ready for production, but before we go to production, I'm gonna let the press heat up. Same thing on a manual. We'll show a little bit of a, a video here. How we go about doing that on the manual, you essentially just let your palettes rotate underneath your flash, get them up to temperature so that way you can go to production and run at a slightly faster pace. Let's go ahead and warm these pallets up and run off some shirts. The press is all nice and warmed up. I got my lovely stack of shirts over here. Got some hoodies that we're printing over there as well, which we'll have to make a smaller print. But let's get to production and show you how these turn out and how you could do this for yourself as well at your own shop. Or at home, in the garage, who knows? Let's get to it. tuning in if you're new to the channel be sure to high five that like button smash that subscribe button 
leave a comment below. Until next time, we'll see you later.